Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. No, I'm good. I have to call in sick today. My dog ate my homework. Essentially, the vlog I had ready for today just it's it's a mess, and I'm it's not it's not happening. <laughs> that happens sometimes. You know, I always take the vlogs fairly casually, but it's just, it was one of those weeks where there were a lot of interruptions, so the flow is just rough. It's going to come out, but I'm just going to turn it into a two-week vlog for next weekend, because uh, it's just, it's, ugh, there's a lot to work out, that's all. Apparently, this is what I consider my vlog. It's all in here. But I still wanted to pop in, say hi to everyone, and I really wanted to give a big thanks to everybody for their replies to the last week's vlog, The Plenty Kindness Project. Everyone was just so kind and supportive, which I really appreciate. Wasn't really expecting it because I didn't really want to present my view on everything from the perspective of like having had a rough time, even though I had in the past. I. I've mostly moved on from that. Generally, the haters just get a eye roll from me. That's about it at this point, because I have come to learn that you can't expect rational behavior from irrational people, and typically people who are going around leaving weird and odd, nasty comments on videos are usually not rational people. So I mean, I'd take it all with a grain of salt, and actually not even, for the most part. We all have our days though, right? But anyways, that's the point was just I wanted to say thank you to everybody so so kind so much support I really appreciate it how does this lens always get so greasy so fast I blame the Moroccan oil <laughs> some plants are a little bit thirsty it's the weather is kind of approached that time where I like to cut back on my watering a little bit and uh, it just it when it comes to the vlog which you'll see next weekend it's, like I said, gonna be a two-weekend vlog. I'm also going to do my best to make this, like, a no or a very little edit video so that I can get it out to everybody today. Which, you know, I don't like to do. I like to take my time editing, but it's okay. Everything's fine. That's what I keep telling myself. It's all with everything. It's just the way things grow sometimes. Basically, what happened with the vlog that will be out next week. I'm not gonna talk about everything, so I'll give it away. So it's, like, no big surprises or anything. But I was like, hey, I need to repot some things before I move them inside. And then I was like, hey, let's go to the botanicals. But then the weather took a turn. The forecast was like, oh, the next 10 days, it's still going to be pretty warm and mild, which is what you hope for at this time of year. And the, then like two days later, it was like, no, nah, never mind, falls here. So it went from 94 to 70 with lows in the 40s. Here's the forecast up here on the screen. The only reason I'm even talking about that is because I know that there are people who have been kind of waiting for me to talk a little bit more about moving the plants inside. And uh, that's all in the vlog that's not coming out today. So I thought it would be a good idea just to like very briefly talk about that because if another week goes by, you know, people who live further north than myself, I'm in zone six, everybody who's further up north, they don't have as much time to wait, right? Oh, and then the botanicals thing doesn't happen because it turned out the only day I could go there was an event. And um, it doesn't, it's not easy to have like leisure filming time when there's like thousands of people everywhere. So uh, just wanted to go over this really kind of quickly. We will see when it comes to moving my tropicals inside. So you see this forecast up here on the left hand side of the screen, assuming that my editor's letting me move pictures around today. And uh, when I start to see lows in the 40s with certain plants like these heliconias that's when I cut back on watering you can see those clamped leaves they look really thirsty they are but with plants that do not like cool temperatures meaning really anything below 50 watering them when it's cool outside can sometimes lead to rot so what I do with these plants if I'm not ready to take them in yet then what I will do is during the peak of the warmth of the day I'll give them a light drink and by light drink what I mean is I just water them enough to where as soon as I see the water come out the bottom of the pot that's it that's all they get and then I don't water them again until they're at least 50% of the way dry. I do that because if I were to saturate that soil when temperatures are cooler they're not going to use that water because when it's cooler outside I'm not talking about all the tropicals just like the heliconias some of my orchids and uh, this would be true for 
all of the tropicals, but I'll get into that in a minute. If I were to water them, then that water is just going to kind of hang out around the roots, not really get used. They're not going to take it up because it's cool. They don't even feel like growing when it's cool, so it can lead to rot. I also don't want to dehydrate them either, though. But what I'm saying is, though, if I were to water these heliconias right now, then they're not, those leaves aren't going to open up. They're not going to be like, oh, I just got watered. They're just going to stay looking like that. And that varies from heliconia to heliconia, of course. But with these right here, the citrocorums, that tends to be the case. And I'm just using these as a general example for like my true heat loving tropicals. I'd say the same is true for like my dracanias. Even my crotons, though they can take more cold, that's still going to be how I treat them when temperatures start to like be steadily cool during the day and like especially cool at nighttime. Whereas with something like a heliconia, I'm like, well, uh, y'all just really ideally need to be moved inside, but I'm not ready yet. So they're just going to have to hang out for a few more days. As long as there's no hard freeze or really frost, they'll be okay. It's just a matter of maintaining them so that they don't rot. That's the, we don't want that to happen. That's a bad thing. As a general rule of thumb, when I start to see those temperatures like that were just up there on the screen with pretty much all of my plants, that is when I start to cut back on watering, though. I generally cut back by about 50% on my timers and hand watering, like I said. Very light, just because they're not really using the water as much. It's more just a matter of sustaining them as they adjust to the season. And true tropicals don't adjust to the season. That's not their thing. So with the heliconias and the true, true, true tropicals, like even the adenidia palms, I uh, cut pretty far back on watering them. The areca palms, the spindle palms, the queens are fine. They're tough, I don't really worry about them. Gingers as well, I like a pile of coleus I'm getting ready to do something with down there. Diphenbachia, again, they don't, they don't like the cool temperatures. And even like the cordolins, the fruticasas, same thing. It can be a complicated thing to talk about, kind of like watering plants, because there are a lot of variables. And just because something is a true, true tropical, meaning plants that grow between the tropical latitudes or equatorial, those are true tropicals. You know, you can grow things that aren't tropical outside of the tropics. There are plenty of plants that are like hardy to zone eight, but maybe they're native to the tropics, you know, something like that. But there are plants that do not like cool temperatures, so it's hard. Like, I can't really go through every single one of those. So uh, there would be some research involved on everyone's end to decide and figure out if the plant they have is one of those heat-loving plants. And then if that's the case, those get moved in first, right? Then there are others like the bird of paradise. The white bird of paradise specifically can take more cool temperatures. They don't necessarily prefer it, but they can take it. They're not just going to necessarily rot away like a heliconia will. Cooler temperatures, meaning like if it drops into the 40s and upper 30s, they'll be okay. I mean, heck, the white bird of paradise can even take a light frost. It'll do some damage, but they can take it and recover from it. And then you have something like the alocajas. Okay, alocajas sometimes can overwinter in the ground and survive a winter with some mulch and like deal with frost and cold temperatures. Doesn't mean that they prefer it, but they can take it. However, if it's cool outside and they got watered, so if temperatures were below 50, 45, somewhere in there, I'm talking Fahrenheit, hopefully you, you knew that, then uh, again, chances are those tubers will rot away because one, they don't really like to be sopping wet, period, unless it's really, really warm. And then two, it, they're not gonna use that water that they're being watered with because they're not in a state of growth. So you have to cut back. Now, in gardening, everything I'm talking about here is generally referred to as hardening off. Hardening off just means basically taking the plants out of the state of grow, grow, grow to like, okay, we're going to chill now and uh, slow things down and get them prepared to move inside. To be moved inside. To admit, you get what I'm saying. Oh, pardon me. I need to reset my time lapse. Of course, I have a thirsty plant. My first thought is, hey, let me time lapse that. It's not necessary, but I just, I can't help myself because I am obsessed with doing time lapses. That's not in focus. The Fetonia, for example, they uh, do not like cooler temperatures, so I cut back on watering. <laughs> cut back a little bit too far. Sometimes it's kind of like a dance and you have to learn what the plants prefer. And I came out this morning and was like, oh, would you please feed me? I'm thirsty. So I gave it a drink. It'll pop back up in no time. That's why I thought it'd be fun to do a time lapse of that because they, why would you focus on everything behind what's in front of the camera? They respond very quickly to being watered. That was my point. So that would be a fun thing to do a time. It's really neither here nor there, but I'm still substituting for a vlog here. Remember? So that's just, things are casual. Uh, oh, this is something I haven't updated in a very long time. The umbrella planter. 
And there's not much to update with. The sand severities have grown a lot. I have gone ahead and tossed in a few little air plants that are getting ready to bloom. But you can see all of the leaves that are in here. Those have really started to do their thing. They're getting going. See if I can get a little close up of some of the roots on there. Put it in there. Yeah, this teeny tiny itty bitty little baby echeverias. I have a lot of them in here because, you know, echeverias, sometimes you pot them up and they just drop leaves like insanity and you just leave them, just, I just leave them in there. I just let them sit there on top of the rocks. I haven't touched them. This entire planter has been watered maybe three times since I set it up. It's only had one heavy watering. The others have just been kind of like a light drink and they're all doing really well. And I still haven't, <laughs> I never potted up this such area. That's a little bit embarrassing, but I was like, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And yeah. It's doing well in there, so I'm just like, you can hang out. This isn't the appropriate time of year to be messing with such things anyways, which is something that was a bit of an issue with the vlog. I had started things out saying, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to repot things and get them ready to move in, but then that forecast changed. I'm like, well, I'm not going to repot them now when the lows are going to be in the 40s. There's no point. That water isn't going to saturate the root ball and the only way to keep a plant hydrated when you repot them is to fully saturate the entire pot so that those roots will spread out from their root mass that they were in from their previous pot, right? So it just wouldn't have made sense. I would have been watering the plants and they wouldn't be in an active state of growth. They'd just be sitting there, they would dehydrate, potentially rot. It would have been bad. I decided what I will do with those plants. I should have just repotted them like a month ago and it's fine. They just grew more than I thought they would. So I didn't think they would necessarily need a repotting. I'm talking about like I have a few alacajas and a, a few other small things that I just don't want to have to water nonstop during the winter months. And they're not big enough yet to where I would want to keep them as like a dormant tuber. I go into a lot more detail on that in the vlog that will be out next week. But basically, uh, I think what I'm going to have to do is move those in and then have like a repotting day because I keep everything, you know, in my grow space, which is my garage down there. We're not, I'm, we're not going to go over there right now though, because I'm kind of like having a Marie Kondo moment and it's, it's a disaster. <laughs> I was like, let me get organized and just there's, there's stuff everywhere which will be good in the long run. I want things to be really tidy when I bring them in. But the point being that when I move the plants in, that grow space is warm. It's not like average household temperatures where it's, you know, typically 70 degrees. And there I keep it between 78 and 84. It's brightly lit, so they'll still be growing actively. So that's a more logical time to repot them. I maybe might move them in and then let them adjust for a day or two. But I really think with an alacaja, I'd rather just get it done and over with because you know, they can be finicky just about moving them and then uh, repotting them and the change in the, the, the they're kind of divas sometimes. But the ones I'm repotting though is like a Plumbe Metallica and uh, it's usually a pretty sturdy alocadra. So I'm not really that worried about that. And then like I have an Aphalandra and a few other things that, yeah, I figure probably just smarter to go ahead and wait, right? Just to be safe. Oh, and then some variables. I don't want to just assume that people will deduce things on their own. If that forecast were to be very wet and very rainy and cool, or nighttime temperatures being cool and then the daytime temperatures not warming up above like 75, then I would just go ahead and move everything in. I mean, not everything, but the true, true tropicals, the heliconias specifically, and probably the jerkanias and those sorts of things, uh, they would just rot. Same thing with a lot of the succulents. Now, I have all my succulents under umbrellas and sheltered this year because it just, it rained so much this summer that I couldn't really do anything with my succulents. I just had to keep them sheltered. But so, if, but if they were to get wet, then that would be a different story. Even the air plants, the Talansias, they wouldn't like that either. To just they'd rot. It's they're not going to use that water. It's just going to sit on them. It's going to be cold. I mean, just kind of like people don't want to be cold and wet. A lot of the tropical and subtropical plants don't either, especially succulents. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who likes to be cold and wet, but that's not really the norm. You get what I'm saying? It's just kind of like, I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that you don't water your plants as much inside as you do outside, right? There's more airflow outside. I have a frond here that popped off the Edenidia palm. And higher humidity, typically. What am I doing? This is why I might, this shouldn't be doing this on camera. I don't know what to do with that. There. 
That's why things are always so clean and tidy out here. The same thing, cooler temperatures outside mean you treat the plants just the same basically as you would inside. Just don't overwater them. But that also doesn't mean that if I have plants that are really, really dry and look thirsty that I'm not going to water them like these curcumas here, the elizabethfoliums. They don't like to be dry for too terribly long. Pardon the tag. I haven't decided if I'm keeping this or not. <laughs> so I left the label on it. I think I like this watering wand, but I'm just not sure. It was only like $12 or $13 though. So for that, that kind of price, I like it. That's why the label's still there. So I will still water just lightly. And then of course, any plants that aren't tolerant of going dry, like a fern, well, those just need to go in. They're not going to handle this. They just need to go inside. The macho fern is pretty tough, but um, actually, I don't really... I've kind of weeded out my super finicky ferns because I just I don't have time for that mess, except for my Australian tree fern. That, that is... That fern is such a pain in the butt. Very much a love-hate relationship with that fern. You like this heliconia? That was a mail-order plant, and not impressed. So just light watering. I let it drain through and that's it. Chances are you know how to water plants by now. If not, nothing wrong with that. It's always good to keep learning. And I do like to have an assortment of plants in my garden that can take more cold than others. So like my windmill palms are over here. They're starting to fill up with the fall leaves. The main thing is I don't want those to collect in the trunk there if they're on the foliage. Not that big of a deal, but in the crown, that can be a problem if it gets wet outside. But something like a windmill palm, much more cold tolerant. I don't usually bring these in until like December or January sometimes. I Typically when temperatures start to drop below 20, I go ahead and move them in. Just because they're slow growers, so I don't see a reason to put them through anything where there will be much damage to the foliage. That's also why I don't put them in the ground. I used to, but if we'd have a bad winter, they would defoliate. And then you have to wait like an entire year for them to flush fully back out and look good again. And like, they just cost too much. I got the ones I have for very cheap and they've grown a lot, but I've had them for a long time. It would cost a few hundred bucks to replace these. I'm not doing that. They were like $30 originally. So that's why I keep those in pots. Was just throwing that info out there for people who like to ask why I don't just put the windmill palms in the ground. Cause I usually get that question whenever I talk about them. And it's the same thing here with the mule palms. They can take a lot of colds. Pardon the dog torn up petunias there, but I leave those out like for a long time too and I don't really worry about watering them too much when it gets cold out I they just kind of do their own thing the mule palms are sturdy and then the same thing with the yucca rostratas they can stay out till it's fairly cold as long as it's not sopping wet the Mediterranean fan palms kind of the same sort of they just they can take some cold but they really don't want to be wet oh, and then I have these yucca recurvifolias I have a couple of them I'll probably move those into the ground next year, but for now I still have them in their nursery containers. They have a decent amount of trunk on them, but they're in zone 7, I'm in zone 6, so I'm just kind of like letting them have a couple years to adjust to the cold, so I leave them out a little bit longer every year, then pull them back in. But it's nice having some things around, like uh, there's a small pindu palm there too. They can stay out into the cold, so even in November there will still be some things out, I'll just be rearranging and doing things a little bit differently while the true, true, true tropicals are going inside. The theme there being that having an assortment of tropical plants and temperate plants means that I can move things in in stages, which is really what I prefer. I can bring in the warm loving plants first, which is more ideal because in the grow space they'll be closer to the house, which is the warmest side of the garage. And then the plants that don't really care as much, like the windmill palms and the mule palms, those are on the furthest point of the grow space, more near my garage door. So it'll all make more sense when I get the garage cleaned up and when they're talking about it. But essentially it's just whatever's closest to the house is going to be warmer and whatever's close to the garage door where it's drafty, going to be much more cool. And I do wrap things in plastic and there's a whole big, that's, that's, you'll see. So if you have a lot of plants outside that need to be moved in, prioritize the most tropical plants first and move them in that way. Ultimately, I would say it is really best to just, if when in doubt, move them in just to be safe, right? There's no reason to stress a plant out if you don't know what kind of conditions the plant likes. Uh, but if you're like me and you have an awful lot of house plants, but maybe uh, house plants and tropical plants, I mean, potato, potato, sometimes, not always, but maybe there are plants that you have and you're not sure if you should move them in. Uh, maybe they're not labeled. I, I don't know. Just take those in just to be safe. And then with anything else you're not sure about, if you need to move things in in stages, then I would say find out what the plant is, or if you already know, that's fantastic. 
Google it, figure out where it comes from and what the weather's like, what the climate's like, where the plant comes from. Sometimes there are hybrids, a lot of hybrids actually, and variants of things that can make that a little bit difficult. But when that's the case, just look up its hardiness zones and its temperature preferences and stuff like that. And that can paint a better picture of what the plant can handle because some plants have a lot more versatility than others like those windmill palms. I mean, they can go down well below freezing and they can go up to pretty hot temperatures so they don't look the best when grown in really hot climates or something like, well, like there are a lot of philodendrons that come from tropical environments, but will do just fine in a temperate environment as long as there's some warmth, but no cold. Do you get that? That, that was a lot. I mean, let me rephrase that as plants that prefer a little bit more stability, meaning that they like a little bit of fluctuation between day and night, but they don't aren't a <laughs> they aren't necessarily a plant that's going to be oh it's ninety five degrees I'm cool with that oh it's forty four degrees that's fine too. There's just so many variables. Like my Vanda orchids, typically Vandas are warmth lovers, so they are not going to like cool temperatures pretty much at all. So that's why. A little bit more on the dry side right now. They're still getting water, though it's kind of humid for this time of year, so they're doing okay. But there are types of Vandas that can take cooler temperatures that come from higher elevations and things like that. So it really is good to kind of do a little bit of research, dig in, and know what your plant likes. But when in doubt, just move them in, just to be safe. I know, that was a lot, and I'm sorry. It's a vlog. The things are a little bit more laid back here when we do the vlogs. The weekly videos, you know, they're not scripted, but I, like, make an outline before I do those videos to kind of keep a specific flow going, or at least I try my best to. But this is just, this is just plant chat time. Sometimes I think of my plants almost like in zodiac form. Not, like, I'm not very well versed with those sorts of things, but there are plants like the Chrysosakis redna, the um, what red lipstick, sealing wax palm, whatever it is, where they have very specific wants. So they want things to be warm and humid and uh, pretty moist. And if they don't have that, then the world just comes crumbling down around them and they die. So Taurus. <laughs> I can say that I'm a Taurus, don't take offense. And then you have something like a sweet potato vine where they're like, you know what, you can put me in the sun or in the shade, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna keep on growing and grow wherever I want to and it's not gonna stop and it's gonna be very chaotic and all over the place. And that's when you hit the, I would say a sweet potato vine might be something like an Aries. Unapologetically themselves, which is a beautiful thing. That's, yes, things are messy. I've been cutting things back. It's fall. That's what's going on. Okay, new video idea. I need to do my plant zodiac. I think that would be a lot of fun. Most like roasting my plants, but not really because I don't want to roast people in their zodiac signs because some people take that very seriously. <laughs> Clearly not one of those people. And then lastly, back on topic, the caladiums. Those are a plant that like a dormancy. They really, 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 really prefer it to get good growth out of them the next year. So with those, I'm just kind of leaving them be and uh, they're going to start to kind of fall and do their thing. The light's changing, the temperatures are changing, and then I cut them back and clean the roots off. That was all in my caladium video, right? Did y'all see that? You can check it out. Put them in a box with like some perlite, something like that. Storm someplace cool, dark, and dry and replant them in the springtime. Oh, do it again. Oh man, that squirrel was sitting back there like doing some like weird little dance. I think it was his way of saying he wants to kill me, but it was pretty cute. I'm aware saying that you just kind of need to know your plants isn't the most helpful advice to give, but really, I mean, it's just sort of the truth. It's really important you have a plant to research it and get to know that plant. That's not always possible, right? Because a lot of the times things aren't labeled or they're not labeled correctly. It's a very big thorn in my side. It seems to be a growing problem. I just find it's much easier with your plants to have a good background knowledge and know their preferences. Makes it a lot easier, particularly when it comes to when to move them inside and how to treat them. It's different outside versus inside, right? And that's also why it makes it kind of difficult to do a video on, which is kind of good for a vlog. Keep it a little bit more casual so it can just be a discussion. Isn't this mum just absolutely gorgeous? I'm gonna go into more details on this in next weekend's vlog, but I, it smells heavenly. And it's a garden mum. It's a perennial. It's not one of the floral mums. I don't see them like this very often anymore. I got really excited when I found that. And there are a few others. You see, there's a glimpse. A few other things I picked up. We'll talk about next week. I am like constantly checking this camera because my batteries, I guess they've gotten old. What is your problem? Come on, behave. 
uh, one of my batteries just won't charge. Like sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. There's apparently an adapter I can put in here on these these A7s on the, the Sony Alphas where you can plug it in. I need to get my hands on one of those. That would be really nifty with doing things like a time lapse that can take a really long time. I'm so far zoomed in because I don't want y'all, I'm just gonna admit it. I took all the stuff on the table and threw it in a chair to make it look like the table's clean, but that's not, you know me well enough. That's just not the way things go here. It's not trash though. It's just stuff I had on the table. Fish food, a catalog, glass cleaner, those sorts of things. You, I mean, you just saw it. Oh, and it would appear we've reached the point in the vlog where I just start rambling incoherently and then the video's over and people go, what the hell just happened? <laughs> Which is why I appreciate y'all so much. That's what a lot of you are here for. A little bit of a hibiscus update. In the hibiscus video, I said I would update everybody when the rest of these started blooming. And there's still a lot of buds left, but a couple of them have opened up and they're looking very pretty. This one, the colors have faded with the changing temperatures and whatnot, but it's still really pretty. It doesn't have that like intense bubblegum pink that it had before, but I still really like it. I actually am thinking with this one right here, I might graft a bunch of these branches onto a trunk next spring. So I have like a tree form. I think that would be pretty cool. And then a quick little croton update. This is the one that got repotted in last week's video. I didn't even end up showing the repot, but I did it and then I was like, oh, that came out beautiful. It has bounced back wonderfully. In that video, I felt <laughs> kind of dumb because I was pulling out annuals from around this Chinese fan palm that's behind it. And uh, I didn't even think, oh wait, I want to keep the croton, so I just like ripped it out of there. Ideally, if you want to keep the plant, be gentle with how you remove them from their pot, right? <laughs> just pull them right out. Maybe take like a hand shovel and go around, get as much of the roots out as possible. But um, I got lucky and it's been a very forgiving plant. And uh, the mandevilla that got repotted last week is growing very well also. It's really responded very nicely to being bumped up a size. Curtain flowers, aren't they cute? I think they're cute, not much to them, but they're just like little balls of happiness. Bunkin, you wanna say hi in the vlog real quick? You know everybody loves you because you're so precious. Yes, you are. And hold the camera up here so it looks like you're looking at everybody. How you doing? Oh, I wish you could talk. Actually, no. No, I don't wish you could talk. I don't. I feel like you would have a lot of cat-like things to say. That might be kind of offensive. Such a sweetheart. Yes, you are. Such a good girl. There's animal time. I know people like to see the animals. Pumpkin, one more time. You want to say hi one more time? Pumpkin? 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 Hi. Yeah, good girl. Hey, old man, how you doing? How's it going? Oh, boy. One fun thing about the cool weather, the Labradors love it. I mean, they like the heat too, but when it gets cool out, I think there's like an area, a temperature area that's much more gentle on his hips. We're kind of in that place right now. And Toby, he's nine years old, but he's pretty sturdy from a lifetime of doing nothing and sleeping all the time. Right, Toby? Tobes, you want to say hi? Yep, you guys aren't really very into it today. What's up? Oh, and then here's that, uh, the plum bay I was talking about, where I'm in the process of hardening it off. And it doesn't seem to be enjoying the process. It'll be okay, though. I did come in and cut back the lantana tree. Finally, it went out of bloom, and I was like, I've got to... It was so big. I mean, it was all the way over here. So there's that. I'm going to go through and get those sweet potato vines cut out. Things are kind of dry and thirsty, but temperature's going to be kind of cool. So I'm just going to give everybody a light water and move on with my weekend. Toby? Nothing? Still? No acknowledgement? Okay. My best friend, best friend since childhood, went into labor last night. And guys, I'm so excited. Ah, crap. I missed the end of the time lapse. Shoot. I'll start it again. Hopefully it still has a little bit of popping up to do. Yeah, my friend. I've never had a friend have a baby. And she's like my best friend ever. It's like my sister. So I'm so excited. I'm actually kind of nauseous. I don't know what that's about. I think that I'm so excited that I'm nauseous. That's never happened to me before. But it's just that waiting game, you know? So everybody wish her luck. And hopefully I'm going to be hanging out with a baby here in a few days. Uh, it's not swimming time, Tobes. That wouldn't be a good idea. Actually, the water's probably still kind of warm. The groundwater is quite warm still, very toasty. I was getting a glass of water last night and I was like, I'm gonna need a lot of ice for this. <laughs> it's very warm, which is nice, which means the pool's probably still a little bit warm, but 
I mean, full of leaves, that's no big deal though. See here, yeah, that's still warm enough. What are you doing, bud? You're looking for something. You, do you think there's a frog in the pool? You looking for the frog, Toby? Yeah, you need to leave those frogs alone. My papers are blown off the table. One of my outlines for a video. Flying all over the place. That was bad camera work. I apologize. Not that any of the vlogs are very cinematic. So yeah, one last time. Thank you everybody for so much kindness and so much positivity. It makes such a big difference and just kind of helps keep me motivated. So I appreciate it. You know, it's a two-way street. So thank you. I was still surprised that there were comments I had to remove from the video on being kind, but that's just kind of the nature of the internet these days. It doesn't really bother me. It more annoys me. And I do it because I don't really want y'all to have to see them. I want things to be positive. I want everybody to feel welcomed. And uh, just having the toxicity around doesn't do that, right? Those things got to go. I want my channel to feel like a safe place. So I just delete it if it's like super nasty and unkind. If something's constructive, that's a little bit different. Sometimes constructive comments aren't always phrased very well. You know, sometimes you can be constructive without being a jerk, but uh, those I'll usually keep unless it's just nasty. Like there's a difference, right? You can tell when something's just rude and nasty and coming from a bad place versus like maybe someone just really doesn't have very good people skills. Regardless, whatever the case, I ain't letting nobody poop on my rainbow. I'm having a good time. And I hope you are too. Hey, baby tuck. Having a great day, great laugh, and everything just going beautifully for you. There'll be more updates with things on my social media, mostly Instagram. That's linked down below. You can follow me there. Updates like with things as I'm moving them in. Like I need to, I'm going to pull those impatience out and probably underplant this with some coleus actually because, you know, I've struggled with the mealybugs on those areca palms for years. And coleus is supposed to be a really good attractant to mealybugs. And so I could treat the coleus much more easily than this entire plant. I think that might help kind of control a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. It's an experiment. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, you can give the video a thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel. So thank you. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. I'll upload multiple times a week. And that way you'll know new videos come out. Oh, I need to pull the tropical water lilies too. It's definitely time to do that. I'm glad I came over here and remembered that and we'll be reminded as I'm editing this. That's very, very important. The temperatures are dropping. That water's starting to cool off. And thanks for everyone for hanging out. Hope you're having a great day, great weekend, or just, you know, whenever you're watching this. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye.